What's your reaction to hearing that Alec will be back on Friday? Yeah, great. <laughs> Five stars is a lot better than his four, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Chris uh, asked Jose Barrios about what uh, a month of four man was like earlier. He said it was pretty rough. We realized it's something we had to do, but obviously prefer fought. Just looking back, do you feel like the four man affected you in some way, not getting an extra day of recovery here and there? Pleasure. Does that have any impact on you? Yeah, it affected all of us, no doubt. No doubt about it. Um, couldn't work out the way we wanted to, couldn't throw bullpens the way we wanted to. Um, but at the end of the day, we just got it done. I mean, we knew the situation we were in kind of thing. We had to do what was best for Alec, and I think he's going to come back and be great for us. But I mean, it was just getting through it. Um, but yeah, um, I would think, I mean, heck, organizations are going to six man rotations for a reason. And we're going to a four man rotation, which is, I mean, no one's ever going to go to a four man rotation unless you have to. Do you remember a time in your career where you've had that before? No. Six man, maybe, but never four man. That's not, no. There's still runway needed there, but Hyunjin, with Hyunjin Ryu making progress, I mean, would you envision uh, being in, potentially in the six man down the road and seeing that being like an advantage, something that you um, appreciate? I mean, I don't, I don't want to throw the timetable out. Sure. I really have no idea um, about Rue and when can we can of expect him back. But, I mean, I know it's not in the next two weeks. Right. Um, so the old adage with baseball is, like, give it a week and everything changes. So Lord only knows what happens when Rue can actually come back to us. So looking that far ahead is kind of crazy. I just thought, thought that was interesting hearing a guy talk about the impact of the four-man rotation, which is a four-man rotation plus Trevor Richards. Yep. Okay. The the, the very because I've never heard that clip before. It's mm -hmm. it, I'm I'm so happy you you brought that and we got to hear that. Here's the first thing I thought of when he said out of his mouth how hard it was to do things between starts mm -hmm. that you normally do that you can't do because there's only four of you. Now I know why Alec Manoa is coming back sooner than. What we expected. I mean, he had eight innings in the minor leagues. Eight innings is going to go down there and fix 13 starts of, let's be honest, poop. It ain't. But to listen to that and knowing Pete Walker and John Snyder, the, the communication skills between those two and those guys that are their everyday grinders and know that if Bassett is saying that to Hazel and Shai Davidi and whoever else was standing around there, you don't think he's saying that to Pete Walker, Ross Atkins, John Snyder, saying, uh, uh, Uncle, like we, you want yeah. the best out of me? You want you want the best out of the group? Let's go. Like, we can't continue to do this. I, I'm too old. I mean, let's face it. Right. He's been around a long time. Yes. So does the other guys. Yes. They've been around a long time. It's a lot to ask. Yeah. Now you know. Like, you didn't know. But now you know. I wondered because I, I heard I heard the same thing you did, and part of me thought, you know, this is this is the value of having veteran starting pitchers who are locked up and who've committed to the organization for a while. Guys who've been through it, and when I heard that clip, that that was the first thing the first thing I thought of is, is the fact that you've got all these guys who are vested in this team. I mean, they've put their signatures on contracts. Yes, they're getting good money, but they are heavily invested in what this team needs to do. And I'm with you. My when I heard that clip, and I think we talked about this a little bit yesterday, the first thing I thought of when Alec Manoa is coming up is what was the impact on Kevin Gossman? Then you look, oh, Gossman gets an extra day. We yep. all know how much Kevin Gossman likes an extra day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I am I wonder if there wasn't a point where push came to shove. and We've, we've heard Barrio say you know, these somebody, things out loud. Yeah, that, somebody you know, you just you, said, guys, you can't do, you can't uncle. run. I you think can't, uncle's the right I, Absolutely. Word. You can't work out the way you normally do. It's routine. It's messed all that up. We'll give you a month. All this is not our problem. Like, you figure it out. Like, it's bring another guy in here, get Alec up, let's figure out if he's rare, raring and ready to go. And to your point yesterday, you made, they need to know and know quickly. 
Well, I think that's the other thing with Alec Manoa is, is, is you need to know what you have when you approach the trade deadline. And, and it's not just Alec Manoa, but it's Hyunjin Ryu as well. So, I mean, look at it. it it's very simple. Look at it this way. Compare what Ross Atkins' approach would be, knowing that Ryu is ready and knowing what he has in Alec Manoa, whether it's good or bad, to Ross Atkins' approach at the trade deadline, still uncertain about Alec Manoa uh, and, not, and, and not expecting Hyunjin Ryu back. I mean, that changes what you do at the trade deadline completely. If both Ryu and Manoa can contribute, given what these other starters have done, then your focus has got to be on an eighth inning arm, yeah, and 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 another bat. Now, I don't want to go down the road. I know how hard it is to bring an impactful bat, but I'm saying somebody that changes the dynamic, somebody that changes the dynamic yeah. of your lineup. L- listen to the way he was talking about routines and things he couldn't do, and and the struggles it's been of just having his best stuff every time and, he goes and, out. And what I liked about this, I'm just going to jump in. This wasn't a guy whining. It's what I liked about it. It no, wasn't a guy whining. No, it was a guy, but it answering a question it, it is also we've given him long enough to figure it out like right. it's a big boy league we've done our part you, you, you like we can't continue to do this and you think that we're going to make a serious run with this thing after the all-star break from what i was told and i told you this the people that i had talked to the time frame was somewhere around that four week mark that's about right here. Sounds like they'd had conver- <clears throat> excuse me, conversations with the other guys in that rotation saying, basically, give us this give us long of a leash. Yeah. Work it out. Just try and figure it out. You know how hard this is going to be. You're going to have to adjust. We think you can <laughs> do it. Give it to us. We're going to bring him up. I'm sure they had somewhat of a date. I mean, this sort of makes – I, a little bit of sense. I don't. When it comes to where, it's, it's where perfect, he's starting and, and how big the field is and right. the team he's facing, the lineup he's facing. Like, it's not a very good team. It's but not a very I, good lineup. I it's still, a big park. Like, it I, makes total sense. I'm still a little surprised it's this early. Like, I'm not going to go down. I, I'm not going to go down the road of saying, you got to know a lot of people in social media. I know a lot of commentators said they say, oh my God, they're bringing him up too early. Folks, we just don't know. Yeah, like, with all due respect, I, you don't know. I was I until know. I heard Bassett say that. I, that indicates to me that there are there were some pressures at work Absol- here. Absolutely. 